Hey guys, welcome to a new video. This is going to be a little bit of a talk video about, uh, well, um, 3D printing. So, 3D printing. I talked about my 3D printer, I think, about one and a half years ago, September 2018. I just looked it up. Uh, and I bought an Ender 3. And I didn't really make any 3D printing videos after that. Now, I didn't buy it to make 3D printing videos. This wasn't going to become a 3D printing channel, as I told you then. Um, so what have I, have I been doing it? Why did I buy it? Well, especially now that we're all home with the human malware situation, um, I thought it'd be a good subject to talk about because basically I bought it for hobby, but also for convenience. For instance, um, let me show you some examples. So uh, I talked about these uh, Xiaomi temperature sensors on my channel uh, for doing my per room temperature sensing in Home Assistant with ESP32s and stuff like that. I have a video about it. I'll, I'll link it. Um, but these sensors don't have a base, basically. You can't really set them down. They have a sticky pad and they have this removable part and you can stick them somewhere. But I also wanted to just put them somewhere instead of sticking them down. Well, lo and behold, go on Thingiverse and someone designed this little, well, I guess you could call it little chair. And well, I downloaded the design, 3D printed it and it's perfect. It's awesome. I have like 12 of these all throughout the house <laughs> and they're all not all yellow. The girlfriend doesn't like that, but this was one of my test uh, samples. And yeah, so that's one example. Another fun thing to do is, uh, well, if you have a, a logo or something like that, and if I turn it around correctly, um, yeah, you can print your own logo or text stuff or make a sign for on a door or somewhere else. And, uh, it's 3D printed. It's not like made from wood, but doing this from wood would actually be a lot of work and designing this in 3D and then printing it, well, it's actually pretty easy if you already have the logo. So you can, as I said, make signs or, or things like that. And there's other utility use. For instance, I am doing a project where I'm going to compare several different LED strips in a single video to highlight different LED colors and quality and stuff like that. And I needed a way to basically um, arrange the separate LED strips in a orderly fashion so that I could get some good uh, shots from them, camera shots. And well, these LED strips like to twist around and uh, lie over each other and go all kinds of ways, except the way I want them to. So I thought, okay, how do I fix it? Well, in the end, this isn't the right one. There we go. In the end, I ended up making this thing. This is what I call my, uh, I don't know, simple LED organizer. I spent a, a lazy Sunday designing it and well, I went through several iterations. So like this was the first one. It's a lot bulkier and bigger and it had just the slots in it and it did already have the slants and stuff like that. And after that, I started uh, improving it and uh, I'm, <laughs> I got smart. I made uh, tinier samples, prototypes. And well, this is the finished version. I have like a, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I'll, I'll show you some close-up shots. I have, a, I have like 10 millimeter LED uh, written on the side because I'm planning on making eight and 12 millimeter versions also. And then I have, uh, you know, have to have fun with this stuff. I have my, uh, my logo here on the back <laughs> because you know, but that didn't turn out correctly the first time. So we have a failed version of that. And, uh, in the end I made slots, um, angled slots because 3d printers can do a little bit of magic. They can print like a little bit in the air and a bit of, a bit of an overhang, but they can't do real magic. So you have, don't can't have too much overhang. So I made it a slant and then I made two slots and, uh, the LED strip, uh, basically slots in the middle and you twist it in there and light flat and then move it back and it kind of locks in place and to remove it, you basically push it back and you could take it out again. And that, well, solved my problem. So I was thinking like, okay, um, 
Without a 3D printer, how would I have made this or how would I have done this? Of course, I could have used some tape and all kinds of other crap, but it was actually fun designing something like this. So here in the design software, you can kind of see the steps I went through. I first uh, made a block and then I cut the slots out and then I made the slants and made the edges and made the text and the logo in the back. And I'm not a great expert at this either. I just played around for a few hours. Uh, there's definitely uh, other channels out there that are better at this. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, talk about this because uh, Linus Tech Tips also released a video this week, like what can you get for a hundred dollar from a hundred dollar three D printer, and well, basically that thing sucked. Um, but I have the Ender Three, and it's only about one hundred eighty bucks, or about two hundred two hundred ten if you take the if you uh, buy the pro version, and they ship it locally here in uh, Europe from Germany, for instance, or the UK, or from the US, uh, even if you buy it from AliExpress or Banggood. And for $200, you can get a 3D printer, all complete, with like two kilos of PLA. And, uh, you know, printing one of these is like 30 grams. So you can really print a lot of stuff with that. And for about 200 bucks, you're set. You can go. And that isn't one of those crappy things you saw in Linus Tech Tip videos. It was a fine video, but that printer was just crap. But for 200 bucks, you can certainly get something that's worth your money. Now, let's go through how 3D printing works. Basically, 3D printing works with a head, which squids, I don't know, uh, molten plastic on a bed. And uh, basically the print head itself doesn't really move that much. It can go one direction, and then the bed can go another direction, and then the gantry can go the third direction, and that way you can print in 3D, basically. So what it does, it just lays layers of molten plastic on top of each other. But the amount of accuracy that they've been able to build into like a $200 machine is, well, I find it really impressive for like uh, things like this or or even uh, these things where, oh, no, that's a one without a logo. I'm mixing them up. Uh, where I can get my logo in there and that's all hanging in the air for a part or, or these slots that's also hanging in the air. It's really impressive how that works. Um, now, if we take this part, for example, it doesn't just fill it up completely with plastic because then it would, well, it would just cost a lot of money and take hours and hours or even days. What it does, it makes walls and bottom and top layers. And those are solid, but inside of the object itself they have something that's called infill and you can see it here if i go through my uh slicer slicer is what you do if you get a model file and you want to make it uh so that your printer can print it and where you want it on the bed and the settings you need to use for the uh, material printing in and stuff like that um but it basically infill is like 20 percent so you save 80% of the material. And even if you do that, well, I, I guess I could break this if I really wanted to, but this stuff is, it's, it's, it's pretty solid. It's pretty good. So yeah, if you're looking for like a hobby and it can be useful for some stuff, but it's mostly fun and no, yeah, it's fun and useful. Um, maybe evaluate a 3D printer. As I said, you need about 200 bucks to get started with it. And uh, you see all kinds of crazy mods and stuff like that online. I didn't really do those. I did three mods. Two of those have to do with guiding the 3D printing material uh, a little bit different than the stock Ender 3 does. And the other one is, well, what else can it be? LEDs. I put some LEDs in the sidebars and in the top bar uh, to basically illuminate the print that it's doing. And well, this wouldn't be intermediate technology if I didn't incorporate all of the things I do. So to basically uh, watch the print, you can go all out with OctoPrint and a Raspberry Pi and a camera, and you can do these really elaborate time lapses. I don't have all that. Uh, I just have an IP camera which I zoom in on the 3D printer and then I can follow the 3D print because if it messes up, and it does, I mean, uh, this one, for instance, uh, kind of came loose from the bed 
Uh, this one also had some adherence issue. It has this kind of funky skin on there. I don't know why. Uh, it's, it's definitely not an exact science, especially with like a $200 printer. But if you get things dialed in and prepare to spend some a few hours on that, um, you can certainly get some awesome, very usable results. So, yeah, that's uh, 3D printing. So here's some more shots of the, the logo I'm printing, just, uh, you know, for fun. And um, it's fun to learn about. It can be very useful. They're currently printing a lot of face masks uh, to supplement the medical supplies for the human malware situation. And if you're stuck at home and looking for things to do or learn, learn some 3D mod modeling, print some stuff. And who knows if you run into a use case like mine, where basically, I don't know how I would have built this from wood. I'm not good with wood. That's basically the reason my ultimate overkill disk project is stuck in limbo. I'm not good at working. I suck at working. I shouldn't do working anymore. So yeah, so 3D printing, I can't, can't use it in that project, sadly enough. But um, yeah, if you're looking for something to do, uh, if you have one and you want to help out, you can maybe print some face masks. I didn't really dig into that. Um, but if you're looking for a fun hobby, not too expensive, and uh, it can actually do help you in real life stuff, 3D printing might be a good thing. And the Ender 3 is still a great choice. Uh, I'll, as always, I'll have some links down in the description. And well, that's just kind of the message really. 3D printing is awesome. It's not that expensive. Don't buy a $100 printer, get a $200 printer and uh, have fun with it. So yeah, I'll uh, catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.